1 billion people live in Africa. Less than half of them have electricity. Most of that comes from hydroelectric dams. Many African nations have large river systems. And so, like many countries have done in Europe and the Americas, they began their energy development by building dams. This started in the late 1950s, continues to this day, and will continue into the future, since Africa has only begun to tap its vast hydro potential. To understand the benefits and challenges of building these new projects, I went to see the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, Africa's newest and biggest. The issues they're managing here will be the same ones other countries navigate as they develop hydropower. Kifle Horo is an engineer working for Ethiopia Electric Power on this and other dams for 30 years. Kifle, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Great to Great. be here. Pleasure to meet you here also, to welcome you here. Thank you. And He's now the manager of this really entire project. <laughs> Kifle, yeah. this is unbelievable. Yeah, it's a big job. I mean, this wall just goes forever. You can hardly see the other end. Yeah, it's so nearly 5.2 kilometers. Uh, maybe oh. 3.6, 3.8 miles. Miles. Mm -hmm. And this is not the main dam. This is not the main <laughs> dam. It's the second dam. Right, the long one, but not the... The long one, not the tall one. Right. So we're on the upstream side where it's going to fill. Let's go look at the other side of the dam. The dam, the downstream. The downstream. So we're at the top of the spillway. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Get to the spillway. Okay. It will be automatically controlled. Okay. Depending on the inflow. This is called the Grand Ethiopian, Ethiopian Re Renaissance. Renaissance. Why Renaissance? What does that mean? Ethiopia was great some centuries ago. That's why we call it a Renaissance. Coming back to our greatness. So we have two powerhouses. Right. We have 10 units here and six units there. Okay. Uh, the total intended uh, capacity is around 6.3 gigawatts. Six or seven nuclear reactors. Exactly. This is a, it's a big, massive a big plant. Why is Ethiopia building this dam? Because like most African countries, its energy demands are rising. And that's because its cities and industry are growing. Ethiopia's capital, Addis Ababa, looks like any big U.S. city. In fact, it has a bigger population than all of them, except New York. This is... Uh, the scale of this is just crazy. What's the capacity of one of these? One generator is 400 megawatts. 400. And that's 24-7, 365. That's always on if you want it on. Yes. It's uh, yes. crazy. And there's 16 of these in this whole facility? 16 of these. How much they, water, this ballpark, is moving through around this? Around 350, 330 meter cube. 350 cubic meters cubic every... Cubic meter per second. Every second. <laughs> every second. <laughs> every second. Unbelievable. I did learn that one Ethiopian contractor had been fired and charged with fraud. Another challenge in this kind of project. But overall, I had a very positive impression of the dam and its construction team. What is this dam? How will that contribute to lifting up Ethiopia economically? The country is uh, leading toward industrialization. Mm -hmm. Well, agricultural based industrialization. Right. Uh, so for industry, uh, having a reliable and cheap electricity backbone We've seen some small villages here that are probably unelectrified, I would uh, think, cooking inside with wood and other things. So okay. uh, uh, the government has an aggressive uh, program to electrify the yeah. country as well. So you'll be able to provide electricity to the citizens of Ethiopia. And also we are connected to the neighboring countries. We are building a big transmission line with a capacity of over 1,000 megawatt to Kenya, which will be a venue uh, to be connected to the Southern African grid. Right. It's not only for Ethiopia, I think it's a pride for Africans as well, not to Ethiopians alone. Yeah, for all of Africa. <laughs> yeah, all of Africa. Yeah. At the University of Addis Ababa, 
Dr. Jakob Arsano is an Ethiopian hydropolitics expert. So what does the dam allow Ethiopia to do with the water currently? The water that Ethiopia can keep and use and what will, it will have to release down through Sudan and to Egypt. Is there a plan for that yet? It's a lot of rainfall in Ethiopia from June to uh, September. Mm -hmm. So that is the time the dam gets filled. Okay. The filling will take uh, between five and seven years. And there is also uh, a provision that if there are drought years, then the filling of the dam right. will not take place. Kia Gizehengi is one of Dr. Arsano's graduate students, studying Ethiopian public opinion of the dam. Does it change the status of Ethiopia then? Does it make Ethiopia more prominent? Among the region? Yes. Yeah, because uh, we are selling electricity to Kenya and Sudan, and we are using the, the river, which was not possible for, uh, like for centuries. Right. And no other uh, upstream countries have been able to do that. Now, it'll make a lot of electricity when it's completed. What, yeah. what do the people think will happen with that electricity? Um, so, uh, as you know, like the, there is a, a lot of electric power cuts, even in, in Addis. So that's what people want, mm -hmm. in a way. Be, We've be, had a couple in our hotel. Exactly. <laughs> so it has been common nowadays uh, right. to have power cuts, uh, even in the capital, so later on in the, in the other parts. Mm -hmm. So be it through this dam or other hydroelectric dams, people... Since I visited, Ethiopia is nearing completion of the dam and nearing an agreement with Egypt on the schedule to fill its reservoir. An important step for hydropolitics throughout Africa as water and energy demands continue to grow. There will surely be more challenges in this and other African hydropower projects, but I got the feeling that the people and their leaders are ready to meet them. <laughs>